Church, everybody. This is Pastor Randy. Uh, just coming to you, let you know, I think the word today will be a word that I believe will be a blessing to your life. Uh, it's a word that will let you know as dark it is, it, as it is and, and whatever's happening in your life, God has the power to heal, to deliver, to resurrect you, to put you in a better place than when you called on his name. So I want you to stay tuned. I believe this word is a sobering word. It's a, it's a word that you can take and, and really press in and understand that even though I may be in a season right now of lack, that God is getting ready to do something great in my life. And what has happened to me will only be a memory because God is doing something powerful. Be blessed. All right, well, if you have your Bibles, we're gonna to go to uh, John chapter 11. And we're gonna read verses one through seven, but we're gonna kind of jump through this whole chapter. Um, I wanna have a, a discussion today, a, a dialogue. We're gonna talk about uh, Brother Lazarus. And, Sometimes it's challenging when you preach something that's been preached so many times. So I pray that God will speak something to you different uh, uh, that's in here. But I want to really share this. It's a couple points that we're going to look at and then we're going to go home. But I pray that it blesses you. Uh, in John chapter 11 verses 1 through 7, it says this. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister said to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that he was, that when Jesus heard that he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Mary and her sister Martha and Lazarus. So he, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after he said, then after this, he said to his disciples, "Let us go to Judea, to Judea again." And so, if I could title this. It would be, it was dead until he touched it. Mm. It was dead until Ooh. he touched it or until he spoke to it. Bye. See, we see that God, God's ways are not our ways. Anybody can attest to that. I've been going through a little challenge right now. And if I had my way, I would have God doing some things differently. Mm -hmm. Can anybody say Amen. Yeah. So we can, we can come to an agreement that God's ways are not our ways. The things that he thinks are sometimes not the things that I think or the way that I think I should go is not the way that he takes me. I'm like, God, I see this way seems a little easier. It's less, it's less stress for me. And God is like, no, that's not the way that I'm taking you because that's not the way of your victory. Sometimes victory does not come in the way that we think it should come. It doesn't look the way that we think it should look. But I'm so glad that God knows what's best for me. Even when my flesh wants it a different way, I'm so glad that God doesn't always give in to my adult tantrums. And so we know the Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher than ours. And so when I begin to look at this, I, I, I thought about something here that was a little different to me. I, I, when, when you hear that your friend is sick and, and that he's not going to get well, the first thing you would do is get dressed and you would head to see your friend. Right. And so when I when, when I read this and, 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 they, and Jesus got word that his friend was sick and that word came to him, the Bible says that Jesus, he, he, he got the message, but he stayed two more days. Has, has anybody ever been in a situation where you need him to show up and he does not come when you need him to come? So, so point number one, I want to look at, it says, I wrote here, I said, sometimes it seems like God has not heard your SOS. <laughs> Have you ever sent up an SOS saying, God, I need you, and it seems like God has not heard you? Yes. You, you have sent... Uh, your message that you need help and you are trying to hold 
what pieces of your life together you can hold together until he arrives. Have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to hold it together? You send up an SOS. You say, God, I need your help or I need your peace. I need yes. your direction. And I'm trying to hold what I can hold together. Yes. And, and it seems like you're not coming together. You're not coming to help me. And what I'm holding on, I can barely hold on to it. You are, you are hoping and you are believing. You are hoping because of your relationship with him that he will come quickly. Now, some of us won't admit it, but there are times I say, God, I have worshipped you all my life, so there are some things you should not take me through. Because we have, we have a relationship. Now, somebody else, yeah, you can take them through that. But, but me, no, because I've sacrificed. I've given. I, I've had a relationship with you. I've sold. And so sometimes we, we take on that, that, that air that, you know, I should not have to go through that because of what I have already done for you. But we must understand that his delay is not uh, a denial. Because what we don't understand is that he sees your future, you only see your now. When you're in the midst of a situation, you can't see the future. What you see is now. You see what's in front of you. You see the giants that are in front of you. You see the river that you have to cross. Or you see Pharaoh chasing you, and you don't see a way of escape. So what you see is now. But God's not more, not really concerned about your now because he sees your future. You think that it's over. He said, no, it's just about to begin. Yes. Some of you ought to lift your hand because what you think is your ending is only a beginning. It's a beginning. Yes. It's a beginning. Thank you. See, in order to have a beginning, there has to be an ending of something. That's right. See, your now is not a concern to God because, like I said, he knows your future. He knows the plan that he has for you. And this is not your end, but it is a beginning. Somebody, somebody, somebody shout out and say, this is not the end. It's only my beginning. Come on, you want to get that situation in your mind right now? Tell them this is not the end. It's only the beginning. So when we jump further down in this chapter, verse 11, he tells them that, uh, that uh, Lazarus is at rest or he's sleeping. And he says, I'm going there to awake him from his sleep. And see, the disciples, they didn't really understand what, they, what he was talking about. He said, well, if he's sleeping, why are you going to, to, to wake him up? And see, Jesus was, was trying to tell him, no, no, he's not just sleeping. He's dead. In verse 15, he tells them, he, he tells them, he says, for your sake, it, you ought to be glad that I was not there because it only will help you to believe. See, there are sometimes we want God to show up, and God's like, I'm not going to show up because if I do what I do right away, you won't have the faith in me that when I take you to the next place, you won't have the faith to believe that I can do it or that I can heal, that I can deliver, that I can set free. So there are sometimes God has to wait a couple days or he has to wait some time so that you can, can, can realize that, hey, the only person that can do this is God. See, I'm, I'm so glad that there were times when, when I prayed and I asked God to bring me through and God didn't bring me through right away. But in that waiting, he built my patience. In that waiting, it built my faith. So that as I'm praying, saying, God, take me to another level. When I get to a new level, we know there's new devils. But if I've already seen him work out the situations in the lower level, if I've seen him uh, change, uh, go against uh, the devils and destroy what was on this level, when I get to the next level, I have the faith for it because I saw what God does. Well, of what God has yes. done. Yes. So he tells him, he says, you ought to be glad that I, I wasn't there because I'm getting ready to show you something. <laughs> Point number two. Someone around your situation needs to see God in action. Someone around your situation needs to see God in action. See, if God delivers us every time, what testimony do we have? How can you really testify and say, oh, I had to wait on the Lord or it got bad? See, there are people around your life that, that don't just need to see your, you hear your testimony, they need to see it. That's right, that's right. See, it had to get bad so that people couldn't get the glory for it. It, 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 it was not 
uh, 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 it, it had to get to a point to where it became where, where it had to be taken out of man's hands. There have been some things I have been in that man could not help me. What I'm in right now, man cannot help me. It has to be a supernatural move of God. So God sometimes has to let situations get so bad that you have to release it, and that the people that, that, that there's no one around you that can fix it but Him, so that He gets the glory, so that somebody in your situation will understand or watch in your life will realize, hey, if nobody can help them. And, and, and God brought them out, then I've got to see about this God. I've got to, I've got to try this God because I know for a fact I couldn't help them. Nobody can help them. Then the doctors couldn't help them. Medicine couldn't help them. But somehow they outlived what they were going through. It had to be this God that they talk about. Sometimes you can be in a relationship with somebody and you feel that just because you're in a relationship with them, you get a pass. But I'm so glad that God doesn't just give me passes. That's right. I'm glad that sometimes he has to allow me to go through things to build my character or to trust him or to just believe or to believe in myself. Some of the things we're in is not uh, so that we can so much believe in God, but God wants you to believe in yourself. That the power that he has put in you is a power for real. That you do have power. That you have power when you speak. That you have power when you pray. That you have power when you worship. That you have power when you decree. So sometimes he has to allow things to get bad. So that sometimes you rise up and you begin to speak over yourself. Yes. yes. He, has to, he, has to, he has to sometimes let things get to a point that you recognize that it is only God. And see, when you realize that God has all power, it doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in, because you realize, wait a minute, if he has all power and there is nothing stronger than God, then why am I in fear? Anybody get anything so far? Amen. See, he had to wait. Because see, if he showed up at your first call, you would not believe like you do right now. See, some of us believe God and we trust God because he didn't come the first time we called him. Sometimes not the second or the third time. We had to keep calling him. We had to keep believing. We had to keep confessing. We had to keep praying. We had to keep dancing. We had to keep doing it until he showed up. But when he showed up, he did better than what I was even asking him to do. So that's why I believe him the way that I believe and I can pray the way that I pray and I dance and I worship the way that I do because I know what he has done. We just say he may not come when you want him, but it's right on time. <laughs> see, and, and those who need to see God would not have seen God or believed God if the pressure didn't get hot in your kitchen. Come on. Or if the fire wasn't turned up. See, I, 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 I'm living my life in front of my children so that they see, hey, even when I have hard times and God doesn't answer me, I'm still going to worship. I may break down for a minute. I'm going to get up and praise. But you're going to see God answer so that yeah. when I close my eyes for the last time and my children are still left on earth and they have to serve God, they're going to say, wait a minute, I saw God deal, uh, heal my dad. Or I saw God bring my parents through. I saw God work a miracle where there wasn't nobody else that could do it but God. So I got no choice but to believe. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, I'm an optimistic person, and I told her sometimes I wish I wasn't as optimistic. Because to me, sometimes I feel like it's a downfall. Because I could be going through the worst thing, I'll be, oh, but God's going to come through. God's gonna. And then when he doesn't move the way I want him to move, oh, as quick as I do, then I start to get down. I'm like, wait a minute. And I'm, I'm telling him, don't hope, really. Don't believe. Don't, you know, but, 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 but I've seen God do so much that I have, I can't, I, I can't help but believe that God will do what he said he would do. Yes. Number three. When I read the story, he doesn't always come when you want him. Sometimes he has to let it get bad so that other people will, will be blessed from your, your life. But then also, you've got to understand that if the SOS went out, at some point, it's got to be answered. That's right. And so this morning, I want to declare to you that he is on his way to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if that don't make you happy, you ought to just leave. That brought me comfort to know that if I sent my yes. SO out to him, that he heard me. Yes. 
Yeah. He's got to respond. Yeah. He's not going to leave me in the state that I'm crying in. He's not going to leave me in the state that I'm praying in. That he's going to have to come. He's yeah. going to have to answer. Yeah. And so point number three is he is on his way to you. So what you've got to do is hold on because help is on the way. There's a song Georgia Mass used to sing and I just love that song. I said, hold on. Help is on the way. So you got to tell yourself, so tap, tap yourself and say, hold on. Hold on. Help is on the way. <laughs> He may not come when you want him, but he'll be right there on time. Yeah. I used to love that song. Matter of fact, I might play it when I get in the car. Because you got to tell yourself, hold on, help is on the way. Yeah. You got to understand that he has heard your message. He saw the SOS. And he is coming in your direction. The Bible says that by the time he got to where Lazarus was, the Bible says that he wasn't just sleeping, but he was dead, and he had been in a tomb for four days. See, Martha then sees him and tells him, he, she says, if you had been here, uh, my brother would not have died. That's like us, right? And so, God, if you had been here, I, my marriage wouldn't have suffered. If you had been here, my child wouldn't have had to go. If you had been here, I, would, I wouldn't have lost my job. If you had been here, if you had done your job, that's basically what she's telling him. If you have all power like you say, yeah. <laughs> if you had been in my life, if you were in my vicinity, what happened to me would not have happened. Mm. And so Jesus looks at her and he tells her, he said, uh, he, he, he will rise again. He, he's going to rise again. And, and Martha replies, I know he will. He's going to rise in the resurrection at the last day. But what I love about Jesus is that Jesus, he had to school her. And he was basically telling her this. He said, look, I am the resurrection and, and the life, and whoever believes in me and trusts in me shall live. He says, see, you don't understand that if, if, that, 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 that if he dies, uh, that, that he, he has a relationship with me. See, yeah. see, I'm not concerned about him dying because he has a relationship with the resurrector. See, you got to understand that I'm not afraid about anything going on uh, happening in my life when I am connected to the resurrector. I, 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 he, he has the power to resurrect any situation in my life. Some of you ought to lift your hands, but you don't just have a relationship relationship with a God that has no power, but you have a relationship with God who can resurrect anything. Yes, yes. He told her, he said, I am the resurrection. I'm not, I'm not just talking about when he does die and he makes it into heaven. I'm talking about I'm a resurrector now. I'm a resurrector of dreams. I'm a resurrector of hope. I'm a resurrector of vision. I'm a resurrector of joy. Whatever you need, if you're connected to me, I can make it happen right now. He tells her, see, see you, you got to understand that, see, nothing that is connected to me surely dies. You ought to lift your hands and thank God that, that you're connected to somebody that he has all life-giving power. He yes. told her, he said, you don't have to worry because anything connected to me, it surely does not die. That's right. Say so it doesn't die. It doesn't die. Because it's connected to me. And if I'm not dying, he sure is not dying. So in, in verse 34, he asked, he, he asked her, he said, well, where, where have you laid him? Where, where, where have you placed his body? And, and then in 39, Jesus tells Martha, he says, move the stone. And then they tell him that, that he's dead and he's decaying. And, and, he, re, and, and he, he reminds them, uh, uh, he said, I promise you that if you believe and trust in me, that you would see the glory of God. See, sometimes we're telling God it's over. God, you came too late. God, why are you showing up now? There's nothing that can be resolved. There's nothing that can be fixed. It's over. It's decayed. It's dead. I, I, I had to let it go. And God said, but if you trust me, I'm showing you. I'm telling you, you may think it's dead, but I don't see it as dead. And there's something I had to let happen so that when I bring it back, it's better than it was before. So the Bible says that, that Jesus, he goes into, uh, into, into the tomb and he calls Lazarus by name. And Lazarus has no choice but to get up. Mm. See, there's something in your life that had to die. See, we preach this all the time and I saw something different. I wanted to get to this. There's something in your life that God had to delay. Mm. Because you were calling for it to be fixed. And God said, no, it's got to die. Mm -hmm. But what you don't understand is he had to let it die because after he touches it, 
it's going to come back better than it was before. I'm going through a season where I'm understanding God is letting some things die. And at first I was trying to hold on to, I was trying to give it life. Well, God, if you're not going to give it life, I'm going to give it life. If you're not going to resuscitate it, I'm going to resuscitate it. I'm going I'm to bring it back. I'm going to do what you should be doing. But now I've come to understand there are some things in my life God is allowing to die because it needs to die. Maybe there's a sickness attached to it. There's something attached to it that you don't understand that will take you out in the future. And so God is saying, no, I'm going to let this thing die because once I, once I resurrect it, it's going to be better than it was before. So you don't understand. You we like God. If, if you had been there, this 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 job I had wouldn't have died, but you wouldn't be where you are right now. Some of us are crying over friendship that died, but you wouldn't have the friends you have now if you were still holding on to that friendship. Come on. Come on. Some of us we we've cried over the marriage that died, but what God's about to send you, or what God has given you now, is going to be so much better than what you had. It had to die in order to get you to where you need to be. See, see, some things had to die in order to kill the infection. See, you didn't know how deep the infection went, but God knew if I let this thing die and then when I touch it and resurrect it, when I resurrect you, the infection won't be there anymore. Uh, it will be healed, clear, and you'll be moving on to what yes, you need to move on yes. to. So see, there was see, there was a sickness that Lazarus had that was killing him. And God was like, no, I've got to let this thing take its course so that when I resurrect Lazarus, he resurrects with no sickness. He resurrects as a new person. Some of you ought to understand that what's happening in your life is meant to happen yes. so that it can kill what needs to be killed. So that when God resurrects you and takes you to where you go, there is no infection. Some of you ought to lift your head and say, God, get ready to clear out the infection in my life so that I can go forward and do what God has called me to do. So yes, it's got to die. I may have to get in a tomb. I may be in people may think it's over for me, but they don't understand God is doing something in the death process of my life. See, we just preach about Lazarus getting up. But I tried to search the Bible and try to find out more stuff about Lazarus after he was resurrected, but I saw nothing about a sickness. Come on. Uh, yeah. Come on. See, see, in the next chapter, it talks about how Lazarus was sitting at a table with Jesus. See, what you don't understand is there was an infection that was in your life, but God said, I'm going to let it die, but when I resurrect you, now you're going to be sitting at the table with me fellowshipping. See, at one point, you were calling for SOS for help. Now the help is sitting at the table with you. Come on. And every person that saw this miracle will leave believing, knowing that there was no way you could have got over that but God. Come on, some of you ought to give God a praise right there. See, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get it when I was struggling a couple weeks ago, and, and, and I didn't get it. There were some things God was allowing to die. He was trying to kill the infection so that when he resurrects me, I'm not calling for help. The help is already right there. God's trying to make sure that this thing never comes back. Because what he's telling you, man, you, you, the glory, you, you, this glory that I'm about to reveal, it can't be compared to the suffering. So I don't mind suffering for a minute because I know there's some glory showing up. Some of you lift your hands. You've been suffering. You've been going through something. You've been going through secretly. You haven't been telling anybody. You've been in turmoil. You've been calling God. God hasn't showed up. But it's a reason why. Because he's letting this thing get to a point to where it dies. And he's getting ready to reveal his glory. See, I looked up the word uh, Lazarus' name, and in Hebrew, it means God has helped. That's going to be your testimony. God has helped. God, God has helped me. See, see, there's some enemies that's watching you, too, that don't want God to come through for you. And so they're going to rejoice when they see you in the tomb. But they don't understand that you're getting ready to come up out of it. But you're going to come out of it better than you was when you went in. See, if you read the next chapter, it says that the people showed up to, chill, to, to not only kill Jesus for what he did, but they wanted to kill Lazarus. Because Lazarus was a recipient of God's miracle. But you can't kill what God has already resurrected. You can't kill what God has already resurrected. See, some of us had some affections and some relationships, some friendships that God had to let it take its course 
so that now he can put you with some people that would love you in spite of. That's right. That's right. That wouldn't speak in your face and talk behind your back. Right. That wouldn't be jealous of your blessings. See, there were some things that had to die. There were some affections attached to certain things that, that, it, that, that, that God had to let it take its course mm -hmm. so that now you're going to be in a better place. And so I, I, I uh, was, 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 the Lord has spoken this to me and it, 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 it blessed me because we just talk about Lazarus getting up, but we never talk about what happened to Lazarus afterwards. But there's no mention of a sickness. Some historians say he went on to live another 30 years or so. See, what was attached to you was going to snuff out the rest of your years. So God had to let it take its course. Now, so that it had no way to get into your future. Some of you ought to lift your hands now that God is stopping some things. That it will not have access to your future. Your future will be infection free. Some of you ought to thank him right now. Thank you, Lord. Some of the things you're dealing with right now, God said, I'm allowing it to happen. I'm taking my time because it needs to run its course. Because when I get through resurrecting you, it's not resurrecting with you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so, as I was, as I'm getting ready to close, anybody get anything this morning? Yes. So we could take antibiotics for infections, but the infections could come back. That's true. But when God does what he does, it can't come back. Lazarus came back a new person, sitting at the table, rejoicing, having fellowship with Jesus. See, you don't understand that you go through what you go through. You can really sit at the table. It's something different <laughs> when, 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 when you're, you're calling for Jesus. Then there's a whole other thing when he shows up and he does what he does. And now you're sitting at the table, fellowshipping. I bet Lazarus was saying, man, he said, Jesus, I'm going to thank you that you let me experience a miracle. So now that I realize if I can die and you bring me back, there ain't nothing I can't go through. Yeah. There ain't nothing. You, can you imagine how your faith going to be after God does what he's about to do in your life? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the peace you will have, the security in God saying, wait a minute, this thing took me out, but God brought me back. And now I have no signs of what took me out. There's, oh, see, yeah. see, see, see. What God's about to do in your life, them people won't even be able to trace it down. Mm -hmm. They're like, man, I knew you were sick, but now I, I can't even tell that you was ever sick. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell that you ever went through. Because he's going to make sure there ain't even a sign or a trace of it. And I want to leave with you with with this as we close. As we were closing, uh, and, and, and it was like the Lord said this in a still, small voice. And he said, 2022 will be a year you will experience new life. Ah. See, this last year, year and a half, you've been experiencing death. But God says in 2022, you're going to experience new life. Thank you, Lord. You're going Thank to experience you. life anew. Thank you, Lord. That means what was after you, what was tormenting you, what had brought you pain, what had brought you grief? What tried to destroy you is not going to make it into your 2022. Because God said, I'm going to give you life anew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You got to understand, see, these last two years, it's been about destroying the old man so that the new man could rise. And you get ready to rise anew in 2022. My mind, my, my body, my finances, my faith, it's all going to be new in 2022. It's getting ready to experience life all over again. See, last one was just a, a, a type of shadow of what happened to Jesus. Because later on, Jesus has to go to the grave. But he gets up. And I bet you Lazarus was concerned because that's the wait a minute. If you can get me up, I know you're God. I'm not, I'm not worried. There's nothing that can hold you down. It was dead until he touched it. 